825 back here on your Wednesday morning. Yeah, bizarre sight right there. All kinds of rain. We'll talk weather in a few minutes. Right now we're talking tech with our tech expert, Mike Yanni. He joins us live from Calgary this morning. Mike, good to see you. On a day like this, I'm thinking binge watching is going to happen. It's a summer day. It's raining. But binge watching could be bad yeah. for the environment. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you do it, I do it, I think we all do it. Netflix kind of, it ushered in a new way of watching TV for a lot of people, right? But apparently it may be harmful for the environment. So here's the deal behind this. It's a, a focus group out of Paris. They decided that they wanted to look at the impact that computers and streaming were having on the environment. They came up with some startling stats, Riaz. Uh, they claim that it's the data centers, these huge data centers that are needed to store the shows and then stream them out to our, our TVs and our mobile devices at home. Each year, they pump out more than 300 million tons of greenhouse emissions. 300 million tons, that's equivalent, just to put this in perspective, to the, what Spain puts out in an entire year. That's, mm. that's pretty big. So Netflix and Hulu, the streaming services, they're the big guys. Um, they put out the most emissions. Uh, coming at number two, though, any guess on what online content came in at number two? It's gotta be Netflix, right? Uh, no, Netflix was one, but uh, Facebook, or sorry, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube, streaming videos, and then a close third, um, that would be adult-oriented content <laughs> online. I hear, I yeah, hear that's so big, yeah. Apparently, some people are into that kind of stuff, yeah. Uh, so a lot of greenhouse emissions are being pumped out. And the interesting thing with the YouTube thing, autoplay. You know how it just queues up the next video and goes to the next, the next. Apparently, if Facebook, or sorry, if uh, YouTube was to shut that down, they would save more than half a million tons of greenhouse emissions every year if they would just turn that feature off. Huge, and you know Netflix has got that too if you're into a series and you get that countdown yeah. onto the next uh, show right there. So that's something to consider. Uh, let's bring it local here in Vancouver, and this is uh, for the AR fans out there. This is good news for a Vancouver company. Yeah, no doubt. A lot. You know what? If we think back, Riaz, to five, maybe six years when the first wearables, smart wearables were coming out, who knew it would have taken off the way it does? Everything from smartwatches to bracelets. And now we have something specifically for swimmers. And as you mentioned, this is a company out of Vancouver getting a lot of buzz. It's called Form. Uh, these are augmented reality swim goggles. So this is pretty neat because are, are you a swimmer? <laughs> okay, I've been talking on this show for like 10 years about learning how to swim. Uh, I will be a swimmer soon, so he says. <laughs> Maybe not competitive, but if you were competitive, uh, you can get all your stats like calories burned, uh, the different strokes, uh, laps, split, and all that kind of stuff, uh, all in your field of vision, but it doesn't obscure what you're trying to complete in the pool. So that's pretty cool. And the fact that it's actually developed out of Vancouver uh, is pretty awesome. They apparently got some Olympians together, and it took about four years of research uh, for this to hit the market, and it hit stores uh, next month, so pretty exciting. Mm. Okay, let's close it out with this. Uh, baby names, naming your baby baby after a tech company, is this a thing? There are some very strange names out there. I actually did a Google search to find some of the most bizarre. Homeostasis came up as one from Alberta last year. Wow. Homeostasis. Who names their child that? Uh, Blaze, V, Fantasy, Notorious Shine was another one. So lots of bizarre names out there, but would you name it after a tech company? How about naming your baby after Google. Riaz, you just had a little one uh, not too long ago. Did Google, was it on your list? No, I threw out Skynet <laughs> Megji, but Lori wasn't a fan of, uh, of that. But uh, Google, what a bundle of joy. Right? A family in Indonesia decided that uh, Google was the name. It was the dad, by the way, who was really wanted Google. The wife said, absolutely not. It took months. They named their, their well, they called their child baby boy for the longest time, uh, but they finally caved in and said Google's the one. Google, by the way, sent them a care package with a Google onesie. Uh, and when asked, you know, did Google give you, give you money or anything? They said, no, we actually did it because we want him to be considered smart. We want people to look up to him, and we want people to come to him for help in the future. Future, just like the search engine. Well, so, I'm sure baby Google choice. will be thanking his parents for the rest of his life for that. Right? <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Riaz, I have to say, I love talking to you every week, but this is bittersweet because I think this is the last time we're going to be chatting at least on air to each other. This is it, man. Thanks for bringing uh, you know, the, the tech flavor to the show. You're going to continue to do it. Uh, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for that. You too. Going to miss you, Riaz. I'll miss you too, man. That's Mike Yanni uh, in Calgary this morning talking tech.